definitely know what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning the fear of getting your period back. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time here welcome to my channel. My name is Marlene. I just see that my camera is a little bit there we go. My name is Marlene. I talk about eating disorder recoveries, my own recovery story and everything related to healing the relationship with your own body, with movement and with food. And I've been asked a couple of questions in my comments recently and a lot of people actually wanted to know about period recovery and more detailed about how to cope with getting your period back. Because believe it or not, but for many, many people that can be a huge trigger. Before we start into the topic directly, I want to talk about period loss in eating disorders a little bit. So the medical term is amenorrhea and amenorrhea means if your period does not come for more than three to six months. And this often is the case in people with eating disorders. And against public relief, it doesn't mean that you have a super low BMI. We all know I don't like the BMI, but unfortunately it still get measured by it. But actually many, many people in a quote unquote healthy BMI range lose their period already. And this can mean that their body set point is actually higher so that they need to be at a little higher weight in order to have healthy bodily functions, including having their period. But it can also mean that they overexercise, which means a lot of stress for your body, that they just don't eat enough food overall, or that they don't eat the right food and don't get all the nutrition. So there can be a lot of different reasons for this. Also thinking about your body weight, your physical appearance, how much to eat or what not to eat and all and so on can also cause a lot of stress so leave it or not but thinking about these things alone can be so stressful that your body actually loses the period so what is the problem with losing your period and i know everyone who menstruates or once menstruated in their life knows that it can be painful it can be annoying you know a lot of people actually don't enjoy being on their period but it is a very very important bodily function for healthy women so regardless of if you want to have children or not having your period is actually a healthy bodily function and losing your period can lead to infertility even if you get your period back it can still mean that you have trouble getting having children in the future and can also lead to bone loss so to osteoporosis or osteoporina it can have an impact on your body temperature. So a lot of people who also struggle with eating and lose their period actually are cold all the time. It can actually be very, very hard on your heart. So it can lead to cardiovascular problems. It can lead to changes in your blood pressure. It can lead to a lot of hair loss. It can lead to heavily headaches and it can also lead to changes in your vision. So let me just tell you about my experience. I actually always was comparatively skinny growing up. I always ate enough. I got my period relatively late and I had my period for maybe one and a half years before I developed an eating disorder. Back then I was also on a gestagen pill because I wasn't allowed to take estrogens, which also suppresses your period. But once I got off the pill, I never got my period back until two years ago when I actually finally started eating again. So for over 10 years I didn't have my period, which is not healthy at all. I was constantly cold, I lost a bunch of hair, my bone density at the age of 19 was the one from a 70 year old person. So I remember I had my eating disorder for like two years. I was heavily underweight for one and a half years when I did the checkup and my bone density was extremely low. I had 30% bone density as a 19 year old, which is definitely not normal. And I can only be super grateful and super lucky that never ever anything happened to my bones, that I never broke a bone, because this is extremely, extremely dangerous. I actually recently got my bone density checked. I got my results yesterday and my bone density recovered completely. I actually started crying when I saw the results because again, I was 19 years old. I had the bone density of a 70 year old person and with eating, with recovery and with like constantly nourishing myself, I was able to get my bone density back, which is amazing. I also had to get glasses at the age of 24 and until then my vision was also always very perfect. My, my older sister didn't have glasses. My parents didn't have glasses until they were in their 50s. So it actually didn't run in my family. And I was the only person to get glasses so young. And it more than likely had to do with my under eating. So until today, I still have to wear glasses or contacts. I definitely damaged my vision and it can have to do with the hormones that play a big role in 
losing your period as well. So that being said, I definitely know what I'm talking about. And I definitely know what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning the fear of getting your period back. Because when I first got sick and when I got off my pill and didn't get my period back, it was actually kind of like a win for me. Because it showed me, or more it showed my eating disorder, that I was doing something right. That I was eating little enough to not be on my period again. And... A little side note here, everyone, everybody is different. So some people lose their period way earlier. Some people can be still in a quote unquote healthy rate range, but already losing their period. But some people actually have their period when they are already super underweight. So never ever compare yourself and never ever see the loss of your period or still having your period as a sign that you're not sick enough. You can be sick with an eating disorder and still have your period. It might be that your body works different than another body. So that is never a sign of not being sick enough, even though your eating disorder might try to tell you so. When I was in recovery, I gained weight very quickly because I came out of a very, very, very low weight range and I started eating again and my body literally did everything to just keep the energy to put on some weight. Um, I explained the starvation mode in some other videos. I also explained the famine mode. So you, if your body thinks there's a famine going on, it can't really differentiate if you are the person who's starving your body or if there's an actual famine in the outside. So your body will try to do everything to get put some weight on. So as I put on weight and my body was changing, I still didn't gain back my period. And it honestly gave me some comfort back then because I was still completely in my eating disorder mind. Because we all know our brain takes way longer to actually go to another state than our body does. So just because somebody puts on weight and looks better, quote unquote better or healthier, doesn't mean they are. And that doesn't mean the brain changed already. So as I was putting on weight, I was still in this very disordered mindset. So not having a period actually gave me some rest and some relaxation because I was like, well, apparently I'm still sick. But once I got my period back, I lost that anchor and it kind of felt like, oh, now I have my period back. So now everything from my disease, everything from my eating disorder is gone, which of course was not the case. I struggled so much longer mentally than I did struggle physically, which can be very hard to accept. But when I actually got my period back, there was a small part in me that was a little bit proud and that didn't panic. And I would have never expected that because I always thought, okay, once I get my period back, it's over with. I'm just going to relapse. I'm going to, you know, I had the worst case scenarios in my head, but there was a part of me that was actually proud of it. And I was like, wow, it's been, I think it, at this point it had been like 10 or 11 years that I didn't have my period and I got it back. And it was like such a weird feeling to be in the state where my body finally has enough energy to get the period back. And it definitely took some while until it was like regularly and, you know, until some other issues were resolved. And up to this day, I still struggle with hormonal imbalances. I still have to take a lot of supplements and have to take good care of my body so that my hormones can actually be in balance but it is possible to get your period back. But a lot of people actually talk about the fear of getting your period back. And let me just say, this is something very, very common. So you're definitely not the only person. It is something that our eating disorders don't want us to get our period back. But at the same time, because of the reasons I mentioned earlier, it is super important. And it's also important for your mental recovery to get to a point where you can accept having your period back. You don't have to love it. You don't have to be excited about it. If you are, even better, but you don't have to love it. But it is so important for your body and for your recovery because it is a healthy part of your body. So once you get it back, you will eventually have to come to a point where you accept having a period again, because again, it is part of a healthy woman's body. A few things that actually helped me to accept my period were to embrace the change. And I know it can sound very cheesy and it definitely is easier said than done, but embracing the change can mean to talk to other people about it, to like slowly 
trying to understand your body again to understanding that every few weeks your body will need more rest even more food that you are a woman that menstruates and that there's nothing wrong with it on a spiritual level menstruation is actually the cleaning of the body and actually not just on a spiritual level because that's basically what it is there for right and regardless of if you want to have children in the future or not having your period is something healthy and something that you actually can be proud of and especially if you've lost your period in the past and you gain it back it can be something to be proud of it doesn't mean that you have to stop increasing your intake it doesn't mean that you're eating too much not at all because as i said earlier everybody works different so somebody might get their period back already but they still need to gain weight and even if you don't have to gain weight you still need to eat a lot because i talked about the internal reparation of your body so much even if your weight is already at a quote unquote healthy point, or even if you overshot your initial weight, you still have to eat a lot. And getting your period back is only one of a billion things that needs healing. So of course there is no overall tip that I can give you because everyone is different and every eating disorder is different as well. But understanding that getting your period back is actually a step to a healthier, you again it is a step to better bone density it might be a step to better vision it might be a step to healthier hair it might be a step to healthier skin and it also might be a step to better emotional regulation because it means that your hormones slowly but surely get into balance again which can actually ease the symptoms of depression of anxiety of body dysmorphia and of other things you struggle with so getting your period back is actually a very good step towards your full recovery because oftentimes in recovery we, we still struggle with those two sides one part of us doesn't want to let go of the eating disorder we still want to keep the last bits we still want to be a little bit unhealthy a little bit sick and the other part actually is so sick of being sick and wants to be healthy and this is a normal struggle that doesn't mean that recovery is not possible for you in fact this is actually something that probably 99 percent of the people in recovery experience but you have to keep going and as long as you don't listen to the sick side and don't want to hold on to the sick parts but still continue to heal then you will reach full recovery so I hope this video helped you all. I hope um, this topic is helpful for you as well. If you, if you want to, you can definitely tell me in the comments if this is a topic that concerns you, if this is something you experienced in your life. And as always, let me know if you have any other co topics you want me to talk about, if you have any questions about my personal recovery, about recovery overall, something, something you currently struggle with. And I will see you guys in the next one.